Everybody, Anton is here, and this is a tutorial about how I designed this particular uh, machete. And uh, this is a three part tutorial. So, the first part is about uh, the design inside 3D code, and the second part will be about retopology and then texturing. I'll try to use 3D code at, at all the stages and uh, utilize it at most. I'm not sure, however, that I'll be able to use it at 100%, maybe at 90-85%. But yeah, let's start with just the design. All right, so my cheddar time. Well, to start any kind of project, obviously you start to bulk up on reference. And I was looking for combat machete and for tactical machete or modern machete might be an interesting one. So I'm looking for this uh, modern looking weapon. Don't want to do something old, I want to make it sharp and cool. So open a few of those and just save them into a library. I, I quite like this one. And this today's video is sponsored by KnifeCenter.com. Well, not really, but I did find that Knife Center has got a good selection of knives that are uh, also photoshot from the like, side view, from profile view, so you can use the silhouette quite effectively. Yeah, and that's so I've got a little collection here, but I'll probably uh, download a few more. All right, so I've got this knife from the knifecenter.com. And what I want to do is I want to turn it into a silhouette, right? So I'll turn on the layers, uh, levels, control L. And let's just do this like that. That's pretty good. Obviously, it's pretty ragged and it will need to be uh, cleaned up later on. So let's turn on our layer from the background and rotate this guy. Well, actually, let's make this whole thing bigger. Bigger by... And... I use white as my background filler. And I'll just rotate this guy. Doesn't want to rotate. Okay. So I need to have it more like this. And I'll just draw on top with my brush just these guys here. So it's not perfectly silhouetted. And not a perfect silhouette, not a perfect like profile view, but it's pretty damn good. And it's good for to start with. Uh, the thing is that it helps a lot uh, when uh, it helps with the dimensions. So you don't have to figure out all the dimensions uh, for the handle. And I was actually reading the dimensions for the machete, so I know like the handle usually like twelve centimeters in length and like a few centimeters. Like three, I think about two centimeters of th in in thickness. I should double check that. Uh, but yeah, uh, that that is a big big help. And also, one thing I want to do is I actually want to turn this whole thing into a square. And I want to go into um, image canvas size and switch to. This is a, a com uh, this is a really frequent trick I use for most of the reference images. I do it so I don't have to adjust the reference plane to the specific size of each uh, of each image. So I always know that this is a square. Like whatever I do, uh, so I, so when I create a reference image inside any other third party software, it's a Blender, my 3 ds Max, I can always just uh, create a square plane and assign this texture, and that's always going to be square. Uh, just a bit of a helper. And probably I'll just even multiply these guys a few times. So it will be easier for me to pick any of them later on. Right, let's go and start with the new project in the voxel mode and I hit the box. So the box gives you a different type of uh, dimensions right here on the left. 
And I don't know which dimensions I need to do. I need to pick. But I've just Googled that, uh, like my shadow dimensions. And I've Googled a uh, whole bunch of that. I mean, essentially, it says me like 13 inches and 7 inches for the handle, 13 for the blade. And coming from, you know, uh, another country than America and Liberia, uh, I have to check the inches size. So, like, 7 inches. So like 20 inches to centimeters, about 50 centimeters. But I also do have the original, which got the dimensions here as well. So uh, for this particular blade, it's about about 18 inches. So I think it's about 45 centimeters. So let's type it in. 45. The width, uh, the height is all right. And the width, I was actually checking the width as well, so about 3 centimeters, 3 to 2 is fine. <coughs> we'll figure it out later. And hit apply. So now we have our box with good dimensions. It's for some unknown reasons, it's turned to surface, so we want to send it back to voxel space. And I'll probably use it at about half a million uh, poly count. And let's Let's go into stencils and add our stencil. We have a machete seal right here. And let's turn it on. Try to position it about right. Yeah, and we'll use, I'll use the cut tool to just to cut everything off. I think if I cut right now, it will use, oh yeah, it cuts, cuts pretty well. So. Okay, so we can see it's all kind of a bit awful. In terms of the uh, result, I'm actually even thinking what if we go back and use this stencil, but instead of cutting through, maybe we can use it as um, maybe we can use it as a gu guiding tool like that. So we use it as essentially as just the. reference plane honestly because the that's a problem with stencils they're a little bit useless sometimes because they create you as this jagged uh, pattern i'm not sure why so we have to deal with this vector lines vector curves bz curves that gives you a way smoother result hopefully one day gonna fix this so just just right clicking on these guys to get them get them in place more or less uh well i want to design my blade later as well so let's just keep it like this actually you want So let's see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That stuff we can recreate later as well. So not I'm not too worried about it. And then we can click cut and it cut through. Uh, kind of like I didn't want to. I don't think I can reverse the shape, so I'll just hide the stencil. And da, 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 no, I, but I can save it. So if I click, click here, go save, uh, paste my path file path and go and say curve one and save it 
I do it so I can use it later in the walk side because if I turn on the Kosher here, then I need to load it back. So just one second. So if I click load shape, it pops this thing open. We go back into curve spline and we have it here. So then if I click uh, enter, all right, and I, you know what? I've just discovered a new way of doing this stuff. Uh, if I just click shift enter, if I just do shift enter, I can actually do the reverse uh, cut. And I've just found out about this moment. It was something that I just thought maybe logically you can do that and it will look just, will do it just like it should do. And it kind of did. So yeah, this is what you can do. You can use shift enter and do a reverse cut for your stuff. So just made it slightly bigger or longer like that. And now we have our surface we can deal with. Actually, I think I made it too big just because remember we are still dealing with the dimensions. I no, no longer remembers my shape. Yeah, let's actually make it turn it back, uh, turn it back to the original shape. All right, right. Well, I, well, I started with that shape, but mm, I want to experiment with the design a little bit. So what I'll do, I'll just duplicate this. Um, Machetta, this is going to be my original shape without any hidden polygons. But this one still has got its hidden polygons, so if I just unhide certain stuff, I can unhide and see it. And let's see if I can play around and design some stuff. And I think this is the moment where I can just press my hotkey to delete all the hidden polygons. And then I want to shape this blade a little bit. Probably more like, more like this. And unhide everything else that's been hidden. Then hit and hit the delete the hidden polygons again. And uh, maybe hide that guy. Go see if I just stuff like that. You know what? I, I think I want to make this whole piece uh, longer. So again, I'll just duplicate it and I'll go into a split tool and hit the border split to zero. I think, well, this is gonna be my blade, so I'm, I'm, don't worry too much. I'm not actually worried too much about the back of the handle, so the handle is gonna be separate. So what I can do, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think I'll just delete this part. And that's going to be my handle. And just duplicate that. And apply some kind of different. Sh so this is going to be my blade. Any other. Okay. Any, any prettier. Okay. So now we have some kind of idea of how it looks. And I think I'll just, I know the original one was kind of under, uh, under the angle, but just make it straight, makes it easier to deal with. And I want to make it slightly longer just because uh, it's kind of cooler when it's longer, more aggressive. <coughs> uh, 
And I think I can go and really turn on the symmetry and cut out the these guys. Also think I need to go higher than oh it's pretty low. I need to go to like half a million. Just do this again. Or maybe it was just a fine line, so I don't really need to do it again. Okay. Uh, maybe, okay, just make it like this. And like that. Kind of, if you do this type of design, looks a bit m even more modern. You know, like, yeah, crazy modern machete, a bit more futuristic. So I need to figure out a better cut. What about this cut? If you do this cut, then it looks like a knife. <coughs> and that's, that's not my intention. So let's do... this stuff and maybe yeah uh, if you want to make a blade a sharp blade you actually have a problem inside 3d code to get a, a traditional sharp blade well we start to do this, which you kind of have to do anyway, uh, getting a cut from the front, uh, maybe too much of a cut from the front, more like this. All right, so I got that. And if I want to have a curved blade going up, this is actually really hard to do inside 3D code. It's it's a breeze to do it inside any polygonal modeling software or parametrical modeling software like Fusion. Fairly easy and you also have control about it. But here, what you have to do if you want to do it is you have to go into shift and to posing, is switch to uh, transpose mode to line and go to E mode, go pick a line here. Then let's try and pick a selection here. This line selection is always quite funky and I never quite get how it works, to be honest. Let's try again. Come on, do it, do it. Yeah, you can see it's pretty. Uh, so when I drop the selection, I go to transform mode. By my hotkey is at W and then go back to pose mode. And okay, so this time I was just holding it all the way. And then I don't use it that often. Maybe I should, to be honest. Okay, then we have this guy, and well, essentially, you have to stretch it and then bend it like that. Ooh, you. Ooh, you. We get a sail. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And do this. And then if you go and cut it out, you get a knife plate, which has got the curvature that you need. But yeah, it is not easy. You have kind of little control. Well, you, you can change to the distance of the uh, distance of your uh, mask, and that will allow you to change the angle. We can do it again if I try yeah this one give, will give me an abrupter angle like that and we can cut it again I get something that looks like a knife right and that's <laughs> pretty unique way of doing stuff it 
we can. I mean, that, again, I, I achieved it by doing quite a bit of experimentation. Uh, if you think about it, what about uh, if you go and start using the pose tool and try to pose it like this? You know, can't you just achieve the same thing? Uh, believe me, I tried. You, you just cannot. You you kind of do something that doesn't look right. You have to. Ch I was trying with the follow off methods, um, different f follow off applications, but I just couldn't get it right. So yeah, uh, you kind of stuck with this method by extending it and rotating it. I mean, you, you get a pretty you get a pretty decent result to be honest. Uh, it was better than I expected, but not really that modifiable or usable in many cases, unfortunately. But you can do another thing. You can achieve quite a modern look by doing just the cuts from different angles. Uh, actually, need to do this cut, it looks better if I angle it slightly. Like that. Maybe too much. No, not the best angle. What about going that much? Nope, gives me a jagged look. Alright, what about using it stuff like this? This is kinda what I'm aiming at. But let's try again. I uh, don't like that it. it's going in that direction. So this is more of a modern look I was talking about. Just cut those funky looking things. And if I hit F12 a few times, I get a slightly smoother version, but then it smooths in a strange way, gets smooth. This are really thin polygons, they start to look funny. That's right. I mean, I don't mind this particular gradient that's going on there. Like, uh, not gradient, but bending. Uh, because it kind of, again, it looks kind of cool. Maybe to get rid of them, I need to go on a higher poly count. And I'm just thinking about other cuts. Mm, okay. So this is where I'm kind of can leave it uh, without talking and just carry on. Uh, starting with the time lapse. Actually, if I want to do any of those circles right there, I need to activate my grid. And let's go for show 2D grid and change the size of the grid. Grid density. And it doesn't want to show the grid density. Okay, there used to be a sub menu. <laughs> that allow it to do that. Okay, custom. Custom grid. Uh, grid subdivisions, let's make it 500. Okay. And I have a whole video about grid, grids and how to approach them. 3D and 2D grids. I'm trying to press space. Usually, when you do this and press space, you, you have a, you get a menu that allows you to pick a size of the circle, and it doesn't do want to do it right now. All right, so we just uh, go do it. Uh, you can see it's 51 pixels. 
51 pixels. 51 pixels. 51 pixels. And then we can turn it off. I think I need the distance between the circles is way too big. So I need to redo it. But I'm just really showing ways of dealing with this stuff before I turn on the time lapse. Ah, I used the cutoff tool. I thought I was using I thought I used the um, box height so I wanted to unhide the in the middle the part in the middle. But I can't really do it now. What about if I reuse this guy? I can reuse this guy, squash him, and do the boolean operation just for those two guys at, at the top. Let's shift and merge all those two layers, and I get the look I wanted. I probably won't go for that look just because uh, I'd rather have a richer silhouette with holes punched through than just a kind of merged thing. Maybe even having these guys more interest, having more interesting shape, like you know, like this. You know, that's a bit more common, I think. I'm eyeballing it, so it's not. I mean, to deal it properly, what it can do. Uh, this is where you'll have to use the boolean operation again. Is that you'll have to let's let's go box height to a circle, shift that, then control that. So you need to play around with it. I think the resolution of this object is bit too low as well. So then I delete uh, everything that's been hidden and I use it as my boolean element. Let's put it down and make it thicker and duplicate it. Yep, there you go. There's a cut. Actually a better cut than that. And yeah, that's your um, card over there. So let's do a time lapse and uh, finish the modeling for both for the blade and for the grip. All right, so here I decided to combine the blade and the handle so I can have a long, one continuous blade that goes through the whole life, which is like you have it in real life. And cutting, cutting all the excess uh, stuff out. And changing the resolution and all, all that. All right, so I have a handle now and I decided that, well, uh, I need, that I need to start to do some work on the handle. So my usual you know, hide and hide stuff is in the box side, so didn't have the symmetry there, turn on the symmetry. And did a cut, another cut, made it too thin, so I'll have to undo it now. Looking for more presentable material because black is a bit too black, I can't really see much. So I'm hiding stuff, but hiding too much. So I'm just trying to find an angle, I'm just experimenting the shapes oh, and hiding parts here and there. So I'm hiding from the back to get this round shape. Using the spline tool to cut through. So the spline tool, spline tool is quite great to do the bevels that are a bit more intricate than what you can do with just the uh, circle. So here I rotated the blade a little bit so I can get some kind of cuts through using the circular uh, cut tool. And I did a lot of those iterations, like uh, I didn't capture all of them, but I think I did like 
50 60 honestly it's a bit tricky to get the right cut but again it's part of the experimentation process like every time you do a new cut you look how it looks and you just you get something new and a little bit unpredictable really that's kind of cool so i just I decided to change the angle of that stuff and cut through like that so now i'm cutting from under from below like that i think here, about here i was kind of happy but okay no this one is all no <laughs> can see like I've done, I've done so many to be honest it's kind of funny to rewatch it and uh, doing it again and then I'm doing this cut uh, the from the front okay now I actually decided to undo it so yeah um, it's, it's actually not all of them co uh, captured so probably have done even more I wanted to get that flat surface a bit less of that flat surface. You see that flat triangle. I wanted to get less of that and more of this thin blade. And now getting that tip. It's hiding those guys. Do want to hide some bits later. And I'm on hiding that part. And hiding the I don't know how to call it a rear guard, uh, like a front guard. Rear guard. Okay, so here I'll try to experiment with the handle. Smooth it out using a spline tool. All right, another cut using a spline tool, a box, box side. Just evaluating the shape, thinking about what to do next. And I decided to do this cut uh, from this from the top and see how they look. And they look kind of look all fine. And I was like, all right, let's try and keep it. So I'm never sure about any particular cut. So I want to try and do 10 of them, 20 of them until I really like it. And that's again the power of 3D code that you can iterate and iterate and iterate over and over again, and that leads you to a better result in the end. I do try it nowadays maybe to iterate a bit less because it's a bit of a time waste, uh, a time waste uh, but still iterate quite a bit. Right now I'm doing some circles. I thought about uh, having circles that go through the whole thing. It would be kind of cool. I just experimenting again with the shapes for the handle. I'm thinking maybe I could create this plane. I used an unhide uh, geometry thing, but uh, like turn the hidden geometry to an object. But when you turn the hidden geometry to an object, it usually creates this really stunning geometry that's been smoothed out. So I had to duplicate everything, and now I'm just cutting everything visible to get that handle. And that handle panel doesn't really look that great, not as good as expected. But I you know I tested it out again. And also applied, like if you just notice, I've applied a wooden material in, inside 3D code because, um, and it's a default material, like in a in sort of custom one. And I, I honestly think the wooden material is awesome. I just, uh, just it feels so awesome, like when you're uh, cutting through something that looks like wood and you do these cuts and it feels like wood because uh, the whole design of the handle is already got this fluent 
shapes like it would associate with a wooden craft and it's just awesome when you're, when you're able to have materials like that and you know visuals like that uh real time uh unlike zbrush for example where you, you get a uh, material that's pretty far from what you get from Miranda, you know, like ZBrush stuff. Okay, I'm having a grid here because I want to do three circles and I want to do two of them on a specific distance and a specific size. So I like I memorized the amount of pixels I had, like 76 pixels you know, for those two and just duplicated that card twice. Again, just uh, hiding and hiding stuff uh, out of curiosity. I thought it was, the circle was a bit too big. I think that's why I decided to make it a little bit smaller. And now I want to do a cut through the whole thing and because it's supposed to be metal in the middle. All right, we got that through. Change the default shade uh, for to some kind of different metal. And here I just, again, okay, not, not here right now. So what I did, I duplicated, I think at this point, I probably duplicated the handle. Yeah, I duplicated the handle, made it slightly bigger. So now I want to use it as a base to design stuff um, here. And um, in word, I'm doing an inward hidden impression. And and I duplicated it again. So now I have those circles in place. That's one layer. And also have another layer uh, where I can experiment with the shapes that go around the uh, whole handle. And again, I can try 100 different shapes in quite a small amount of time and see whatever looks uh, more interesting for me personally. I do feel that sometimes software gives you a lot of power to do random stuff where certain principles of design still work and sometimes simplicity is better than something over the top. I think I'm still not at that level. I still like to play around and try something that looks so hard that people will ask me, oh, how did you do, how did you do that? But here... Uh, here again, you, you're you more graphic designer right here. You have this duplicated to uh, play on top and you just hide and hide stuff and seeing whatever looks better. Uh, having a full real-time 3D display. And I didn't know that the uh, 3D code was such a good wood material. So it was like really kind of the moment I uh, applied it, I was kind of blown away. And I decided, okay, definitely, I'm definitely keeping that. And I'll try to make it all look like a more of a noble, uh, modern, priced, like expensive item. So you can see I got this blackening happening around the edges like they're way too thin so i would try to clean that up uh, but isn't it smoothing uh f12 but it doesn't really do much so i don't think it was a good idea in the end and it's kind of funny it's black on the one side but it's not black on the other side so i don't even know if it was if i had to smooth it out just think if i could uh add another hole I don't know, I decided to not to do another hole on, at the end of the, at the tip of the uh, blade because it looked like it started to look like a kitchen knife. And I, would, I wanted to avoid, uh, avoid that look. All right, so now I, I want to turn that stuff into kind of real geometry. 
uh, because I had those duplicated layers that was just poking out from the handle. But what I want to do now is I want to hide everything that I've designed. See, I'm like doing these circles around hiding that stuff. And when I hide everything that's, uh, you know, and I'm using, I'll use the spline tool right now to hide the stuff properly. Well, not spline tool yet. Okay, so I'm using the spline tool now to get the silhouette right. So I'm going to hide everything that I see here in black. I'll hide, and you can see now I can invert what uh, I've just hidden and use it as my base uh, to have a nice cool part that's an actual object and it's not poking out it's not like a gimmick on top of the model it's, it's part of the model has been inverted uh, is the design that i've created using the slightly bigger version of it if that makes sense hopefully it does right now i'm just playing around with the shapes uh, not shapes it's colors I combine and stuff, combine the blade and the handle blade, well, handle metal, metallic part. Just cutting some stuff um, on the sides. And yeah, this is pretty much, I'm um, quite happy with this version. Ah, I have that circle there, so I'm about to. I uh, so uh, I did the unhide of the circle, and this one is good to go. Well, I'm doing some experimentation, but it's good to go to be sent to Kisho just for the presentation random for the part one thumb thumbnail really. Right, and Kisha, you got some interesting materials that I applied here and there. And uh, yeah, Kisha is a super simple, simple use. You just drag and drop stuff, you drag and drop environments, and you turn off ground. I have other videos about it, so I'm not really talking too in depth about it here. And yeah. Yeah, this is about it for the high-res version of the Machete. So guys, join me for that part, for the next part. It's gonna appear in the next few days. I'm still working on it.